Okay, here we are at the, at the Great Pyramid. And what's obvious here is before they built up, they, they had to level the, the plateau. This is all artificially laid stone of limestone. Some of these blocks are over 100 tons. And then they would build up. And the core, core limestone of the pyramid was quarried on the plateau. We've tested the stone full of salts and halides. But the pure limestone, which is all left, is just a, a little bit of the casing stones. is pure calcium carbonate. So what we believe is, is they treated this like a Faraday cage. Instead of using metals like gold, silver, to transmit energy, which is a Faraday cage, they used stone, different limestones, and the granite inside to actually shield each other and alternate and powerfully power, transmit the energy, increase the energy. So it was like all the stone is purposely chosen for its content, what they knew was inside it, master geologists, master chemists, master physicists, and they created these structures purposely and no mistakes. And what about the tunnels that are underneath where we're standing? Yes, that, of course, Hakim would always tell us what was built first was underground and above. So the tunnels we see underneath us, myriad, they, they crisscross for at least 300 meters, as you know, because you've been down there, to bring water to the site from the western desert. Water was the source of the energy. So this is what was brought here. All the tunnels then modified in the dynastic times to be tombs. That's why we go in the tombs, you can tone, you hear acoustics. Why did they want acoustics in a tomb for a dead man? No, it was to charge the water originally. So the tunnels underneath were first, above, underground first, then laid at plateau, then pyramids built. So what Stephen Mailer was explaining is the fact that originally this was an energetic structure. It produced some kind of energy. We're not sure what it was. Unlikely that it was electricity, but the function was energetic in nature. It was created thousands of years before the dynastic Egyptians, 5,000 years ago. When the dynastic Egyptians entered this area, they found this structure and the other two great pyramids and others here in place. And so standard academia, as many of you already know who have watched some of my videos, have got this completely wrong. This was not a tomb. There are tombs on the Giza Plateau, but those tombs were chambers that had been created thousands of years before the dynastic Egyptians were ever here. They utilized them because why dig a hole to bury somebody if there's already a hole in place? So what you can see behind me is that the stones, the layers of the Great Pyramid are not simply stacked on top of each other. They three-dimensionally lock into each other, which makes the construction of it far more complicated than what most people realize. And there are 2.3 million multi-ton limestone blocks. Standard academia says that it was likely constructed over the course of 25 years. If that's the case, then you would have to cut, move, and fit into place one block every two minutes. Not like that space between this part and that part will tell us how thick the blade was. Yes. The size, yes. So that power tool cut is the first cut to cut the slab. And then to interlock them together like the foundation here from Basel, then you get this rough machining. So the core of the Great Pyramid, at least 2.3 million blocks, is from the site itself. This is all limestone. So it was hewn from the plateau. The casing stone is Tura limestone, which is from Cairo, which is off in that direction. And the basalt is from the Red Sea area, most likely the Sinai. The weird thing is that the decomposition or breakdown of the basalt, it doesn't look like it's just the result of it 
sitting in the sun. It looks like something very destructive happened to it, and then the dynastic Egyptians reconstructed this area using the broken pieces. Square ones remind me of of, of Cusco. That's what it means. It means it's like like so. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And if you look around the front, there's an arc. Happened because of that check. Because the resonance has happened next to the, the next wall. It doesn't happen from the other side. We can see the scooping marking on the granite stone and this is the ancient lost technology for the rough cut or for the first cut on the on the stone and we can see the knobs in many pieces of the stone very similar to what we were see. this is again part of the scooping marking the ones we're gonna see around the unfinished obelisk in the quarry of uh, granite stone in Aswan the my my issue with that thing the official story is talking about that the pyramid builders or the old kingdom era didn't have the capability to cut or quarry from the bedrock, from the mother rock. And all the granite stone we see here, and we're going to see in every structure that is related to the old kingdom, which means all the pyramids in the Giza Plateau, the granite stone in it was a falling pieces beside the mountain or a loose piece. We find in the open court at least 16 pillars of single solid pieces of rose granite and the one reaches around five and a half meter. We're going to see some of them in the valley temple. So uh, in my opinion, what I see is reflecting some uh, uh, methods for those who did it that they, they had uh, like full capability of cutting and shaping and transferring that hard stone and not somebody with primitive tools because if I don't have the tools, I wasn't going to bother from the beginning and use this kind of stone. Plus, the types of granite stones we're going to see in many cases is very solid. While when we're going to see in the quarry, the granite stone in the surface is crumbling and deteriorating. But the ones they got is from the core. And if it was easy for people who didn't have the capability, why did all the other civilizations that inherited quarried from here? Even in Aswan, when we go to Elephantine Island, this is in Aswan, they quarried from the shrines there to build a, a temple for Satir. But you are in Aswan, why you didn't cut from the granite stone in the mountain itself? Of course, because it's challenging to do that and it's much easier to recycle from a structure. They already shaped the walls and smoothed it and to reuse it in another temple is much easier than bring the rough stone and do the whole work from A to Z. The same two marks like the one we saw in the Alba, the so-called Roman.
רוצה להכיר זימונים שלו. פעם אמרתי, וואי, איך כאלה, כבר לא מגיעים Just guessing. But it's different from the one in the bundle. Yeah, it's like green. It is green. The other one is black. It's also green. Brown on the inside. Chase the malachite. It's prophetic. It's prophetic. These marks, Hakim would say, I see them on the quarry, where the quarry is, he said this with diamond tool marks. Well, it's... And Chris said oh, some type of facing tool. Yeah, yeah, that's also what we saw at Baalbeck, yeah. and what, what we'll probably see when we go to Petra too. And hopefully, that'll document the, the age of that. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the 
دخل بسرعه بس يلا بعدين بنت اللعب عليه Restoration will explode it, isn't it? Yeah. And they carved it around and they made the statue, which we would believe it wasn't originally like this.